Hello, Vedagabe here, and welcome to this Minecraft 1.12 modded episode of Foolcraft from the Craftonomical server. Today, we are going to go ham with powered spawners from Endrio. We're going to set up a lot of them, and we're going to kill all the mobs, and we're going to do all the things like that. But first, guys, I thought I would show you some stuff here. I've uh, added some more compression dynamos, and I've upgraded everything to resonant here. Um, so, so we have more power available, right? But yet, I came back here yesterday, uh, I think it was, or earlier on today, and this thing was empty, uh, the, we had plenty of oil, but we didn't have enough power to compress the oil or treat the oil into tree oil. So, uh, there is some sort of problem here with, with chunk loading, no doubt, <laughs> or something like that. Or, suddenly my vein ore miners down here took up too much power or something, Oh yeah, and I've upgraded this thing to level 2, but that actually means it takes... Ooh, no, that takes a lot of uh, power now per tick. Yeah, okay, so that's probably why then. Anyway, uh, the problem with that is that you need to basically shut those things off then, and then you need to restart the system. Uh, to restart the system, you need some sort of fuel. So I've just placed a, a chest here with rows in, so we can just uh, fuel these babies up. If we ever run into the same situation again, in other news, I'm uh, starting to build this uh, this uh, reborn storage thing over here uh, <clears throat> because this is where we can have all the auto crafting we need. And also, you will notice that the Ender Iron machines that were over there they're gone now, and that is because I've sort of put them in back here and automated them a little bit. I've started automating them anyway because we we want to be able to create these. Uh, spawners without too much hassle. What else is new? I put another um, power cell in here just to increase the buffer here. We now have two and a half million RF stored. Yeah, but let's go over to the new base guys and see what I have been starting on over there. So last episode we built the little dome here and uh, don't you worry guys we're gonna build a lot more above ground here later on. But I've also fixed it up a little bit more. We have a proper entrance here now. We have a thing here. And uh, yeah, there's another power cell here. We can have power out here as well now, which is nice, right? Uh, but there's also this elevator. And there's two floors at the moment. There's ground, which we're on. And there's minus one. And it's not go it doesn't go very far, but it looks really snazzy, I think. Yeah. It's uh, it's some factory blocks, it's some X towns blocks, I think. You no, know? it's just factory blocks and laboratory blocks. That's fine. Okay. Well, anyway, here is a ramp, and uh, here is a big open area that I've dug out. And uh, this is quite interesting, guys. This is the item grates from Dark Utilities, and they're actually a item you're supposed to use to filter items, but they look excellent as a as a, a ramp. Some iron fences. And uh, aluminium scaffolding and some aluminium slab scaffolding as well. And then we have these aluminium stairs here. <laughs> all in all, I mean, I know things are floating a little bit and things like that. I'm not, and it's not done, right? But all in all, I think this is a nice start for our secret laboratory, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, we're not actually going to work, I don't think, too much on the design of the room today. We might do that in a live stream on Sunday, actually. But we're going to put in spawners here. And as you can see, there appear to be two levels here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have two levels of spawners. And we can have one, two, three, four in each, right? So that's eight spawners. And actually, we can have more than eight, more, uh, more than one spawner per slot as well. We can actually have probably up to three if we're not too worried about the amount of drops we, uh, amount of drops we get uh, from each, from the top ones so so that means the uh, 8 times 3 which is 24 spawners now we're not going to have 24 spawners uh, but we're going to have a fair few here and uh, so that's the thing and I, I i've been trying something out as well and that is to have cursed earth spawners or cursed earth underneath spawners and uh, the result is that the cursed earth mobs spawn and the spawner mobs spawn. So I think we might do that at least for some of these guys. So yeah, but what we're going to do today, I think, first of all, is we're going to set up these four 
bottom ones here uh, and basically build them and put one spawner in each and have the spawners so that we can turn them on and off individually and um, have a killing mechanism and just gather up the loot somehow. Yes, but let's see how much of this we can now auto craft and dry up. So uh, we can craft the octatic capacitors. So we need four of them. Right, this is that. Oh man, I need to go and get more grains of infinity, guys. Octatic capacitors coming right up. <laughs> no, <laughs> we need gold nuggets as well. I need. I really need to put my gold in uh, in a compacting drawer. Octatic capacitors, take three. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, just the beginning. As you can see, we can also make the alloys uh, and so on and so forth. And I think you will find that we have one power spawner. But I think we can make. I'll paint it ghost on that's nice. I think we can make these now. If I'm not completely mistaken. Mm -hmm. There's a fair bunch of water crafting going on here now. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. So let's go down and have a little look quickly at what the different things are doing. First of all, this induction smelter <clears throat> is actually doing a fair bit of alloying. So it's creating so uh, solarium and it's creating vibrant alloy and it's creating electrical steel and steel as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to use this uh, thing unless there's a reason to use it. So this alloy smelter uh, creates the the uh, machine chassis and the energetic alloys and then let's see here I don't think I'm using uh, too many of the other things here yet ooh lag yeah not the sag mill and uh, the slice and splice I'm trying to use but actually it's kind of broken I think so maybe Maybe this will not work. Sorry, the, the, the slice of spice is not broken, but the refined storage's input into the slice of spice is broken. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> yep, let's just make them manually. It's not the end of the world. The only problem is you can only put one in at a time. That is quite annoying, actually, to be honest. But with an octactic capacitor, it's not that slow, so it's, it's kind of all right. Turns out, guys, that the, it was the silicon Silicon, there are two, ty two, two types of silicon uh, in the game here, and it's the uh, the normal refined storage silicon, which is the one I have got the recipe for. <clears throat> but then there's also the Ender.io one, which is using the sag mill with sand, preferably, uh, to get uh, some weird balls plus silicon. And uh, yeah, the electrical steel has to have that type of silicon. In it, so I've uh, I had to go back here and change all the recipes around a little bit, but I think we're all right now. We have our four power spawners, we have our four octactic capacitors, but now we need our soul vials. It's fairly straightforward to create them, I reckon, but it's just a matter of what sort of glass do we need. Fused quartz is just basically nether quartz in the alloy smelter. Actually, let's make a recipe for that because you know. That's uh, that's a silly thing not to have a recipe for because I think we're going to end up using it a fair bit here anyway. I guess we don't really need four of these, but I want to <clears throat> go out on a little adventure here now and capture all the mobs that we're going to uh, use. These guys and their magmatic crap. Honestly, it, this this place looks like hell now. It looked really cozy before. <laughs> Look at this dude. <laughs> <laughs> what a hat! Honestly, what a nice hat! I just <laughs> no, so silly. You have to die, man. <laughs> That's that. We have ourselves a wither skeleton. That's nice. And look, <laughs> a blaze as well here. Here we go. Thank you, sir. Enderman. Yes. Bye bye. Gaia pylons. Who's been fighting the Gaia? Let me know in the comments, guys, if you know. 
<laughs> it suits you, man. It suits you. Aha! A sand blitz. A blitz rather than a bliss. Come here, man. Yes. Uh, yeah, so because we want to have energy and redstone signal uh, coming through the same cables here, I think we need to go with the Ender IO conduits for this project. It's just that they're a bit of a pain to create, to be honest. Redstone alloy, I don't know that I have a recipe for that, but we can easily um, <clears throat> swing together some recipes here. It is beautiful to see, guys. It's beautiful to see auto crafting happening. Yes, I like it. So, guys, have you ever seen season 4 of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? <laughs> Might sound like a random question. That season, anyway, is all about the initiative. A secret government uh, agency that is trying to experiment on vampires and the like. And uh, yeah, that's the insp inspiration for, for this, uh, this part of the base. So uh, the initiative has a secret underground complex. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, all uh, white and laboratory-like. And uh, there's, uh, there's these walkways that leads down into like an operating theater down here so that's what we're going to try and create in the end uh, but for now I just wanted to to point out that we're using the laboratory box the medium tiles here for the mob spawners now the floor here is some of this is going to be cursed to earth but we'll we'll deal with that later on in that case um, I'm just trying to make sure I have the measurements right here now so one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah but we need to replace this wall with the laboratory blocks as well. All right, so we've made some progress here, guys. Uh, I've replaced the dirt here. So I've replaced the laboratory blocks with dirt. We're going to have cursed dirt earth on all four of these things, I think. And then this is where the killing is going to take place. Um, and it's going to be diamond spikes because we want all the drops as if it was a player that killed these dudes and I think these are quite harmful for you. I think a line like that should be enough to be honest. Maybe we need to actually take out one more here because uh, it's possible for them I guess to stand on the thing here. Maybe. So we'll just do that. And that and that. Yeah. Oh. Like that. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's all right. This it's just uh, it, it's quite a lot of work. Oh wow! I didn't realize I could have seven by seven on this one. That's nice. Uh, yeah, and the spawners are in place here. And then, like the idea is here, I guess, to have uh, yeah, to have them have the cables come up from the from the top here, like that, and then um, somewhere along here, somewhere here, along here on the ramp, we need to have maybe uh, maybe on these here, we need to have a, an on and off switch for each one of these. Oh wow, things are spawning here now. Oh yeah, and so the idea as well here is to have vector plates to move the mobs like this. And you can have that on top of the cursed earth. I have tried it. Yeah, and I only have the basic type here. That's going to be enough though. They're going to move slowly and surely. And it's going to be cool to see them actually go here. Uh, because what we're going to have in front here is dark clear glass. And I think these are going to be uh, just more of the laboratory blocks. Like that. Yes, there's a skeleton here somewhere that is trying to tickle me. <laughs> yep, so this is what the cabling is going to look like here. We have uh, both of the cables coming in here, and this is the energy cable going off here. So we're going to have energy in the back somehow, and then uh, this is the redstone cable coming down here. And I'll just uh, to, to illustrate, I'll put a facade in like that. <laughs> And uh, a lever on top of there. And that just connects to that. And that way we can turn each and every spawner on and off individually. Now we can't do the cursed earth like that though. 
So I guess we're also going to have to have lamps in here. Uh, but I'm guessing I can have them in the back and sides here, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I think th that's that. Now, the thing is, guys, the time is going uh, quickly when you do Ender IO stuff. Because uh, there's a lot of crafting and a lot of new things to discover here. So, you know what? I'm actually out of time for today. This is going to have to be a two-parter. And we're going to have to continue this next episode. So, what we'll do now... Then, guys, as we, uh, I'm going to leave this part alone here uh, and do that in the next episode. Uh, but in the stream that we are going to have on Sunday. And yes, guys, go and check it out. <laughs> uh, we're going to design the rest of the room here, probably. And also, the stream, incidentally, is to be considered episode 20 of, um, of Foodcraft Season 3. F season 2. <laughs> of Craftonomical Season 2 for me. And so that's going to be quite interesting. I'm hoping to get together with some guys, uh, some of the guys, and uh, I'm hoping to maybe have some base tours and, you know, the story so far and all that sort of stuff in that stream as well. So that's going to be quite interesting for you guys, I hope, to check out. Anyway, that is going to have to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Leave me comments about my derping in Android and tell me if... If I'm doing things correctly or if I'm doing things incorrectly. Hello there, Enderman. Ender person. Hello. Yep. And anyway, guys, I will see you next time. I will see you on Sunday, in fact. Bye.